Hey everybody, this is Pete Wenzel and today I'm going to show you how to get a brand logo on top of your stots by using a bump map in Blender. How to get to the basic clean brick will not be part of this video. So if you're interested in this topic, check out my linked video. In the second tutorial regarding a brand logo on a CG stud, I will cover the most render efficient way. I recommend this workflow for three cases. First is, your scene is really huge. Second is, your computer performance is not so good. And third is, you're doing pretty long takes with many frames to be rendered, where you can spend hours or even days of render time. A bump or height map is an image influencing the shading of an object surface. This is for faking a higher level of object detail than it really has. Compared to a normal map, it is just a grayscale image adjusting the height in one dimension, while a normal map could influence the direction of the surface normals too. As a result, it is pretty hard to draw a normal map by hand because of the many information included. But we can easily create a bump map with any image processing tool. Paint.net or GIMP are two free examples you could use. If you're pretty smart, you could do anything within Blender by using the texture paint mode. I have done this to create the density map in this linked video. I'm the most comfortable by using Photoshop CS6 and that's the reason why I'm going to use it in this demonstration. If you would like to recreate one existing logo, it's best to have a reference photo to repaint, but I will do an AnyBrick logo from scratch. The base height level will be color coded with gray, valleys are coded with black and mountains are white. With this information in mind, we choose mid-gray as the main color and create a whole layer just with this. The logo shall stick out of the ground, so we choose white for the logo and create it. It should be in the center of the image and not too big. The detailed scaling will be done in Blender later. If we would use it with just the gray and the white color, it would look like this in Blender, which is a little bit too sharp. Therefore, we are going to blur the image a little bit to get rid of the sharp edges. The exact amount of blur depends on your image size, so a little bit of experimentation might be needed. At this point, we have to save it as PNG without any compression. Don't save it as JPEG, because seeing compression artifacts as bumpy peaks is not cool. Jump into Blender. Select the low poly brick, duplicate it and set a new name. Substitute the edited high poly brick in the brick collection with it to use this new brick for the particle system. Before we integrate the bump map to the material, we'll create a material copy to have one with bump map and one without. In the material context menu, click copy and rename it. Don't forget, the download link to the blend file we are going to create is in the video's description. Now we open the shader editor and add an image texture node. Search for the bump map we have just created and set it to non-color data. To be able to connect the image with the displacement pin, we need to convert the numbers of the image to a vector using the displacement node. By now, nothing has changed. But you don't have to worry, this is totally fine, because we have to define which part of the object shall be influenced by this bump map before we will see some difference. Go to edit mode and select the faces we would like to adjust. In top view, press U and select unwrap from view. Switch to UV editor and select the correct image. To have the UV wrap of all studs at the same position, we select one after the other and press Shift S. Select it to cursor with offset. Select all via A and we can scale and move the faces all at once until the brand logo is as big as we would like to have it. 
At this point we could see the influence of the bump map, but only if we select material preview or rendered as display settings. You see, the edge is a linear slope, like we would use a bevel modifier with only one segment defined. If you're fine with the result, you're done, but I would like to adjust it a little bit. Apply a RGB curve between image and displacement node. Add a key to gray, which is 0 0.5 for x and y dimension, and tweak the other parts of the curve to look like your desired bevel profile. This is not magic, but a way to tweak it a little bit. Usually the logo pops out a little bit too much. In Shader Editor we could decrease the scale of the displacement node until we get the desired result. While recording this video I have just remembered that a bump map could be used for micro displacement too. I'm currently not planning to do an in-detail tutorial on this topic, but I will do a fast explanation for you. Use cycles in experimental mode. Change the subdivision modifier to adaptive. In material tab under settings we change the displacement method to displacement only. And keep in mind to see micro displacement you have to enable rendered view mode. If you're interested in the longer tutorial regarding micro displacement just let me know in the comments below. On the left side we see the displacement map and on the right side we see it with micro displacement. And that would be the end of this tutorial. In the next video I will show you how to create the brand logo on top of the brick studs by manually object creation. So hit the subscribe button if you want to stay tuned. Now you have reached the end of this video. But this doesn't mean you have to talk to real people. You may be interested in my new video over there. Or you could watch this recommended video. And as a last opportunity, there are many more videos for you at my channel.